Gaia is an incredibly powerful tool. While its flexible node-based system allows you to get decent results from relatively simple workflows, there is a steep learning curve if you want to have creative control. But don't worry, there's one concept in particular that for me was the missing ingredient. And once you understand this, everything else will fall into place. When I first started out, I wanted to create a 3D printed map of Icewind Dale, which just sat behind me. I had a specific feel in mind, so I searched and You've seen the tutorials out there. Create a snowy mountain, design a desert canyon. I combined what I could from these various videos, but I found myself wondering, okay, but how did they know to do that? So my goal in this video isn't just to show you how to replicate my results. It's to empower you to understand Gaia on a fundamental level so that you can solve your own creative problems and bring any world you imagine to life. For those of you who are new to this channel, I, I like to create content focused around creating fantasy maps using Gaia too. If this sounds like this will be interesting to you, please consider subscribing. The overall workflow can be broken down like this. Define your terrain size, create a rough input height map, erosion, simulations, and then texturing and coloring. Rather helpfully, Gaia 2 has the node for each stage categorized in this order. So generally, you should be working your way from top to bottom. Now, for that secret ingredient I mentioned earlier, and trust me, we will be returning to this process time and time again, is understanding the creation of masks from your terrain and using these with a combined node. Now, note that I said masks from your terrain Nothing kills realism more than seeing obviously hand-drawn masks. It is so much better and easier to calculate features from your terrain and use this to affect what you are trying to achieve. Okay, let's start with terrain definition. If you're working on a terrain and it doesn't quite feel right, but you can't quite say why, then you probably need to change your terrain definition. To fix this, all you need to do is go to Project, Build Settings, Terrain, and then update this to a more sensible value. In my case, I actually just need to reduce the height to 500 meters, which works for this scene. Or perhaps you're one step ahead. You're working on a large scale map, so you've set your terrain definition to Gaia's maximum size of 2,400 kilometers, but now you can barely see any of the details. What's happening here? Let's take a look at Mount Everest on Google Earth. As we zoom out, we can see that you soon lose all sense of height from the Himalayas. They appear more as a pattern or a texture. This line shows 2,400 kilometers, the maximum terrain width for Gaia. Mount Everest has a height of 8,800 meters, which is close to Gaia's maximum height of 10,000 meters. If you're aiming for a realistic look at these large scales, then you'll need to use height primarily to influence the color and the texture. Although you can use clever lighting to emphasize the height to some extent. But maybe you just wanna make a cool looking map and you don't care about absolute realism. I previously ran a poll which said that two thirds of you actually prefer an exaggerated look to your terrains. If this is you, then just use a value that's two to 10 times smaller than the true value. The best thing is, you can always experiment with different scales after you've completed your map. Okay, next we're going to look at creating the basic shape. I'm going to use an example from one of my subscribers who has used one of my prepared Gaia project files to turn their idea into this really cool looking terrain. If you want to get this file yourself to use with your map, uh, just join the Discord server that's linked in the description. Not only will you find the files, but a really supportive community of map makers. Once you have something, Post it here. We have the map showcase channel here. I see Renzi 
671 has just posted uh, a nice gif of his workflow there's a few posts from me and from others about kind of either work in progress or work that people are just very proud of and want to share with the rest of the map making community they're an awesome bunch so definitely join in and, and contribute once you have something Post it on Reddit and tag me. If I spot it in the wild, I might even DM you about doing a free tier one commission where I can help tweak your map uh, and do an 8K or an even 16K render. I just really like seeing people who have followed my tutorial, seeing their work out in the wild just makes me super happy. So I like to give thanks for the support and, and sharing your work by helping out with a high resolution render. Okay, so if we take a look at how this started the main thing that you'll need to think about is your input shape there are two versions of this workflow one that takes in an input height map file which is what we're looking at now and one that will try to kind of even automatically generate a random island shape for you as well if you really don't have any kind of starting point so here we're looking at this hand-drawn initial rough height map from my subscriber. If you've not seen the height map in an image form before, essentially the darker areas show low elevation and the brighter areas show high elevation. They've done the right thing here by having a nicely defined coastline where they have a sudden drop off to pure black to separate out land and sea and then they've gone through with a lighter brush kind of like colored in the higher elevation regions just to give a rough idea and that's all it needs to be at this stage it just needs to be a rough idea because we can do additional processing in Gaia to give it more kind of a natural less hand-drawn look in a bit Okay, so here's the first appearance of the secret source, I guess, for mastering Gaia, uh, and that's this combined node. Here we're using it in quite a simple way, but you'll see it kind of cropping up time and time again. The first thing that we want to do is to just add a bit of variety to the shape that we've created. So we want to take this hand-drawn height map and then essentially introduce some Perlin noise to it. Here, the subscriber selected Billowy. You can see how this kind of creates the different undulations in the height. This is perfect for just taking those kind of completely flat areas of the terrain and introducing some noise. Now, just like, so here I've displayed this as a mask so we can see the actual black and white color, but this can be seen as a height field where you see the 3D information. Uh, we can do the opposite here with this. You can see that this is obviously just a black and white image as before. And if you're familiar with Photoshop or other image editing softwares, these are very much kind of like the ways of blending layers. So we can kind of see here that you can just do a pure blend between the two and as you move the slider you get a different amount of influence from each input 0.5 was working nicely this will give you kind of variation on the ground sorry on the sea where uh, there was black here if you didn't want that and you wanted it to remain pure black you could switch to a multiply because a black value is essentially zero and multiplying by zero gives you zero. So this is another option, but I'll set it back to blend. The next thing here is to add a bit of variation to the mountains or the elevated regions. So this is the first example of using a mask that uses the terrain. So after applying a slight blur, you can select the regions by height using this height node and just by either changing the range or the fall off. So the fall off determines how kind of quickly it goes from selected to not selected. But the idea here is either you have a harsh selection 
or you can kind of have something that is mostly affecting the highest parts of your terrain and then the kind of less bright areas will be slightly influenced. Um, the idea here is just to kind of have input into a cracks node and this is one of the many different ways that we can add interest to this basic input shape ahead of the erosion to make the erosion more interesting. Next up is Thermal Shaper. This is one of these nodes from the Modify section. I really kind of steered clear from this section when I first started out in Gaia. Didn't really see what the point was. I wanted, you know, the mountain node. I wanted erosion. Why would I want to pixelate my image? Or why would I want to swirl my image or warp it? turns out these have their uses and when you're trying to creatively solve a problem the answer is often in this section so in this case thermal shaper is adjusting the shape of the elevated areas to have a different kind of fall off from before and it creates a nicer kind of input shape for the erosion and then we just need to think about how we're going to combine those mountains with the original land. When you're doing this, you need to be careful about not clipping. So let's say we had this set to add and we put the value up too high. You get to a point where you hit the ceiling of your maximum allowed elevation, which is essentially pure white in that black and white height map at which point it becomes almost overexposed if it was like a photo and you lose that detail. So you want to make sure that this is actually set to sensible values. And now for the final couple of steps for creating that initial shape before we head into erosion, um, one of my favorites, and again, this is another shortcut to realism I find is the warp node. Now with the warp nodes, you can vary the size. This allows the warp to move further away from your input height map. Typically, we don't actually want to go that high with the size, but we can modify the strength and the iterations to kind of influence how warped the, the terrain is. This helps remove any trace of anything hand drawn and actually, when used in the right way, can almost emulate that impact of the massive tectonic forces on the land, kind of twisting and folding the land beneath it. And so you may be looking at the terrain at this point and thinking, this looks like a mess. <laughs> this doesn't look like a proper terrain at all. And that's fine. That is one of the things that starting out early on I didn't quite understand. I thought I had to have something that looked like a mountain before the erosion step for it to look like a mountain after the erosion step. That's not the case. And once you kind of realize that, you can start being a bit more creative and trying new things. The final little thing for the basic shape, just before we start heading into the erosion step, make use of fractal terraces. So fractal terraces will add this kind of step shape into your terrain. And this starts to make it look somewhat more realistic. And importantly, even if you don't want these kind of obvious terraces in your final eroded mountain, the terraces really give the erosion kind of more to work with and create more interesting shapes. Okay, I think we'll leave things there for today. Um, I'll, I'll follow up with another video looking at the erosion simulation and coloring steps soon. These are absolutely key when it comes to realism and elevating your maps above the crowd. So make sure you don't miss it by hitting subscribe. And if this was helpful, please drop me a like. Happy mapping and I'll see you in the next one.